are you going to do? Uh, presenting speech. Okay, good. Uh, deliver, deliver a speech. Uh, Yosa, you greet your friends, yeah, tell uh, your complete name and then uh, what you are going to do. And the others, you listen carefully to Yosa and then ask them questions related to his speech. Okay, Yosa, it's all yours. Come on. Ma'am, izin presentasi ya. Ya, share screen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Udah kan meme? Okay. Five on five. Okay. So. Basketball. Okay, come on. Okay. Good morning, Mem Lin and friends. My name is Erin Yusafat from Twelve Social One, number Epson One. So today. Uh, I want to present to you about uh, uh, basic art of basketball. So uh, uh, let's hit it. So what is basketball? What kind of sport is that? Why so many people hype about it? So today I want to explain to you. Basically, uh, basketball is contained of three three points. The first one is five five versus five, and then the second one is close to the hoop, and then the last one is highest point will win. Uh, basically, uh, five versus five. It mean it means two two two, two team uh, competing each uh, other to get the highest point by scoring to the hoop. That's uh, what its basketball means. And then, what kind of rules that basketball contain? What uh, so today I will uh, explain to you some some rules. Because uh, there is so many rules and too complex to explain. And then uh, the first one, double dribble. What is double dribble? Double dribble. It means that uh, illegal move that when player uh, dribbling with both hands simultaneously and, uh, or continuously. Uh, and then uh, the second meaning is when the people uh, dribbling and then they stop and then they dribble again. It double dribble. Uh, the second one is traveling. What is traveling? Traveling it means when people uh, when illegal move when when player uh, already dribbling and then they stop and then they have to bring, uh, more than two steps uh, to do scoring to the hoop. Uh, why this uh, is illegal move? Because uh, if there's no traveling rules, people can uh, can uh, carrying the ball without dribbling from the uh, backcourt to the hoop. And then uh, why is two step? In NBA, we see so many people uh, having three steps or four steps because uh, this is a universal universal rule about basketball not the NBA rule because NBA is more complex than the universal one then the next kick we know that basketball uh, is sports using hands not uh, not foot so basically you can uh, kick the ball without it's not soccer then carrying what is carrying carrying it means uh, you are dribbling the ball not from from the top not from the top but from the bottom uh, it's like you're, you you are carrying your your mom's groceries. You get it from the bottom, not from the top. So there is no uh, dribbling from the top. From the bottom again. Okay. And then the the uh, next one is stay in bounds. I think every sport having a boundaries, same like basketball. We must stay at the bounds. Then the the next one is backcourt violation. So what is backup violation? Backup violation is when you're dribbling, uh, they're dribbling to the half court, and then you go back to the back court. Basically, uh, it's like uh, 
we already at the third, uh, already at the sixth semester, and then we want to go back to the first semester. We cannot do that. More mm -hmm. Okay. That's why it's no turning back. And then goal tending. What is goal tending? Goal tending it means when we shoot the basketball, uh, there the ball is going out upwards and downwards. So basically, we cannot block the ball when the ball is traveling downwards. And you can block the ball when they really when the player releases it and go up upwards. When they go downwards, they can we cannot block it. Uh, I have some story about it, about this, uh, about this rule. One day I have a scrimmage, uh, scrimmage against my friend, mm -hmm. and then, uh, I, I go and I got, I got, I got fall by fall goaltending by by the, the referee because I block it when the ball is almost go, going to the hoop, and then after that, at the fourth quarter. I got goaltending too. So uh, the opponent uh, goaltending my 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 point, even though the point still count, but it hurts man. <laughs> so, so don't do, don't block uh, other people points because it hurts. Basically, it's from my 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 uh, my <laughs> yes. Okay, so. And the last one, uh, I want to uh, show you about some quotes from uh, NBA player. Uh, it's from Larry, Larry Bird. Uh, he he's winning three pits uh, and uh, NBA title. It means not repeat, repeat. It's two, but it's three pits. So it's three consecutive, cons three times con cons consecutive, uh, and and then. He wins three, three pits, finals MVP, three pits, seasons MVP. So the quote is: "Winners is some who recognize his God's given talents, work his tail off to develop into the skills, and then use the skill to accomplish his goal." So basically, this dude is go back to the start. What is God's given talents? So we must develop our talents, become into the skill, and then accomplish with our goal with that skill that God given to us. And then uh, we are already at the end of the presentation. Uh, thank you for listening. Some of you must be scared about SBMPTN. So I got you. I got you. Uh, I I feel you too because I'm scared too. So I uh, I I got some quotes to you. Some people want to make it happen. Some wish it would happen, and the others make it happen. So guys. Good luck for the SBM PPN, and let's make it make it happen. Thank you. Okay, applause. Yeah, well done, Aaron. Okay, guys, after listening to Aaron, so any question related to the presentation? Uh, remember, guys, you will get extra point by asking Yosa the question related to his presentation. Come on, only by asking the question. Yeah, anyone? The question? No question? Okay. Any question? Okay. Give uh, give applause once again for Yosa. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Next, please welcome Safira. Come on, Safira. What you gonna do? Oh, sorry, telling ma'am. Can you hear my voice? Yes, clearly. I can uh, hear your voice clearly. Okay, Safira. Yeah. Sorry, telling ya. Yeah, you agree? Mm -hmm. Come on, continue. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. My name is Safira Naswa, and I'm going to do a storytelling about Cinderella. Cinderella. Okay, guys, listen to the story carefully, yeah, because you will find out what is the moral of the story. Okay, Safira, it's all yours. Okay, so <clears throat> once upon a time, there lived a girl named Cinderella. She lived with 
with her stepmother and her two stepsisters. Her father decided to remarry because he wanted to go find someone who will take care of Cinderella. But it was the opposite. It was Cinderella who took care of the whole family, of the whole house. She was treated like a servant and spent all her day with cleaning and tidying. Even she took the blame for her sister's fault, but she never complained because she always remembered her biological mother works. It was always be kind and have courage. So she never tried to repay their evil actions. One day, the king made an announcement that he was looking for a girl who will be the partner for the prince. Basically, the royalty was looking for a princess. So every girl in the town was invited to the ball and were told to be the most beautiful version of themselves because they could be the chosen princess. Everyone was filled with joy, especially the girls. And Cinderella's sisters were no exceptions. In Cinderella's house, the sisters were so busy to prepare for the ball, but they told Cinderella to do all and to do everything about it. They told Cinderella to sew their gown, they told Cinderella to do their makeup and hair. Basically, they didn't do anything at all. One day, Cinderella asked her stepmother, Mother, when will I have time to prepare for myself for the ball? And her stepmother replied, Who told you that you will attend the ball? You will never attend the ball. The one who will attend the ball is me and my daughters. And my decision is final. Cinderella was very sad because it's her dream to come to the ball. Since she was a kid, she really want to see the pals alive. But now, when it's just a step away, she can't because her stepmother didn't let her. So she was very sad. On the big day, Cinderella was unwillingly helped her stepmother and stepsisters because deep down she really want to go too. And suddenly, she remembered that she still had her biological mother wedding dress in the attic. So, she just have to wait until her stepmother and stepsisters are gone to the palace and she could finally prepare for herself. After the stepmother and stepsisters are gone, she went to the attic and she found the dress. She found the gown, but it was already torn. So, she couldn't wear it anymore. She cried and she ran outside the house. Outside the house, she met a woman. That woman asked Cinderella. Why do you cry? And Cinderella asked that woman, Who are you? And that woman replied, I am a fairy godmother. Now, tell me why are you crying, my darling? And Cinderella answered that she really wants to go to the palace. She really wants to attend the ball, but her stepmother didn't let her and she, and she didn't have any dress to wear. And the stepmother replied Cinderella, Don't you worry, my darling. I will help you. I will make you ready for the ball. And with this magic spell, Cinderella changed the gown. The torn gown is gone. Now it changed into a very fancy dress. From head to toe, it's just a drastic transformation from Cinderella. And Cinderella was very happy and grateful to have a fairy godmother in her home, in front of her home. And the fairy godmother told Cinderella that the spell would only last until midnight. So she had to go back home before midnight, and Cinderella agreed. In the palace, Cinderella met the prince. Finally, she met the prince, and they danced together. While they were dancing, uh, they talked about a lot of things, and they realized that they had a lot in common. So eventually, the prince fell in love with Cinderella. But Cinderella didn't notice the time. She didn't realize that it's already midnight. So she was in panic when she realized it's already midnight and she ran away. The prince was so confused. Why did you run away from me? And because she was in panic, uh, she slipped her shoes on the stairs and she didn't have any more time to go grab it home. So she went home. The prince who saw the shoes told everyone to find who's the owner of the shoes because it's belong to the because it's belong to the princess. And the news spread all over the town that the prince is looking for the owner of the shoes because it's belonged to the princess. And when the royalty team come to Cinderella's house, the stepmother locked Cinderella in the attic. So she couldn't try on the shoes because she was locked. Later, the shoe 
didn't fit in the sister's foot. So the guards asked her stepmother, do you have any more girls in here besides your daughters? And the, and the stepmother answered no. But the guards chose to inspect the whole house anyway. And he was suspicious because he found a stairs to the attic. He went up and banged the door. And after he opened it, he was so shocked because he found a girl. He found Cinderella. And Cinderella was told to try on the shoes. And it fit because it belonged to her. And no one would fit it. And the prince is very happy and proposed to her. After that, they get married and live happily ever after. Okay. Yeah. Well done, Safira. Guys, after listening to the story, yeah, this is the, a very famous story, yeah. So what is the moral of the story? Come on. By answering the question, you will get extra point. Come on. Anyone knows what is the moral of the story? Social one, extra point. Come on, guys. So you, uh, ma'am. Yeah. Do What's not, do not, Sekina. Yeah, Sekina. What, what is the question? Uh, do not. Uh, the moral is do not. Under I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ma'am. Yeah, uh, the. The moral, uh, the moral is do not underestimate, do not, do not underestimate the people. Do the not under, underest, underestimate other people. Okay, what do you think, uh, Safira? Can you add more information about the moral of the story? Uh, I think it's just like the Cinderella's mother words: always mm -hmm. be kind mm -hmm. and don't repay other people's evil actions with evil too because it's just make you dislike them okay yeah just be kind to others do not repay uh what is it others people bad things yeah with the bad things too yeah okay well done safira thank you shekina for the question applause once again okay next Please, well, okay, okay. Uh, before we come to the next performance, yeah, by Ali, everyone, please on camera because uh, we are going to take the picture. Come on. Yeah, on camera, please. Uh, by showing your face and give your smile, you will get also extra point. Come on. Alika, ready to have the screenshot, yeah? Yes, ma'am. Okay, there are 36, so I, I hope that all of us here, uh, there are on your screen. Yeah. Smile, yeah, guys. Alika, kasih abah, Yeah, ma'am. From this morning. Guys, come on, guys, come on, Ken. Angel, Jawad. Angel, okay. Jawad. Yeah, come on. Extra point, extra point on Ken, and you will get. Ma'am, saya izin tidak membuat kamera. If you, if you, if your camera is broken, no problem. American girls. American girls. Come on, all right. Evander, Angel, oh, yeah. Ojan, come on. Sharif. Sharif. On cam, additional point, just by showing your face and your smile. Hey, ma'am. Okay. Ready, guys? One, two, three. Uh, one again. One, two, three. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, go back to our presentation. Please welcome Alif. Alif, yes, what are you going to do? I'm going to present to you about fishes and uh, tropical fish in general. Okay. You guys how to keep aquarium fish. First off, ma'am, can I open the presentation? Yes, all yes. Right. It's all yours. Okay, you if you excuse me. Yeah, everybody, yeah, please pay attention because you are going to ask Alif 
the question related to his presentation and then you will get the point okay is it uh, showing up all yeah. right so yes i can see the presentation here okay come on assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh my name is from uh, 12 social one today i'm gonna talk to you about freshwater fish and how to keep them first of all i like fish i like keeping them they have all the colors in the rainbow that you could want. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful and actually pretty easy to keep if you know how to keep them. And now in this presentation, I'm going to explain to you about these fish. Okay, they're beautiful, they're good looking. Some of them have long flowing fins. Some of them have personality you could ever get in another living being. Now, in this presentation, I would uh, explain to you about three things. First, how to keep your fish alive and healthy and for them to li live for a long time. This question has been asked for so long and again and again because people doesn't actually know how to keep fish. And today I'm going to tell you everything about it. And then what kinds of fish would you like to keep? Obviously, everyone has their preference and have their own choices. That's how we, uh, that's how we choose what our liking is. So, you know, for ado, further ado, after the questions, it will all be done. Now, the first thing to know about how to keep your fish alive and healthy is first, Filtration and weekly water check. Second, read about common fish diseases so you can prevent them from happening or prevent your fish to get some sickness. Hmm. Keeping them healthy is the best kind of way to keep them alive. And then also, the last one, check your water parameters. And now, water change. To keep your fish healthy, you are advised to change your aquarium water from 15 to 20 percent to keep your water clear as day. Why do you want to keep a uh, weekly water change? Well, because fish create waste. As another living being, they defecate and create waste in your aquarium. Just like any other living being, you have to clean them regularly and weekly. But if you do not clean, uh, if you do not clean your aquarium, ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate will build up in your aquarium. That can cause some backside to the living situation of the fish. For example. Those chemicals can cause some unwanted diseases such as gill inflammation, skin rot, fin necrosis, fungal infection, bacterial infection, and weak immune system of the fish. These things you don't want in your fish if you want them to keep them alive for a long time. Now, how do get, we get rid of these chemicals? You say, well, it's all about the filtration. Filtration can uh, can be with many other engines and machines. For example, this right here is uh, is called an outside filter or an external filter. This is one of the best filters you can find in the hobby. And inside it, you can find uh, some filtration uh, uh, materials and gigantic machines such as these. And there is many kinds of filtration from sponge filters, uh, hang on back filters, and on top filters. All of them of which you can buy at a certain price. Now, why do we do filtration? Well, filtration is needed to keep our water clean, right? Mm -hmm. So there are many types of filtration to keep our water clean, not only chemically, but mechanically and uh, biologically as well. Mm -hmm. Now, for cleaning, uh, for cleaning your aquarium to make it pristine and clean from the debris, you need mechanical filtration. Mm -hmm. Mechanical filtration uses sponge filter, filter floss, or uh, floss press that could clean the water so, so that the water is uh, as clean as your glass. And then there is biological filtration. Biological filtration relies on bacteria such as nitrosomonas bacteria, nitrococcus bacteria, nitrobacter uh, bacteria, and nitrosococcus bacteria. These bacteria is needed to wipe out those ammonia, nitrates, and nitrites that your fish produces so that your water is clean and pristine. And then the last one, it's chemical filtration. Chemical filtration is used for cleaning the carbon of your water, uh, cleaning the tannins of your water. If, what is tannin? Tannin is the uh, organic material that happens to build up in your aquarium. It may cause your aquarium to be colored as yellow or maybe uh, make your aquariums dirty or have algae buildup. Now, before I go even further, is there any questions regarding filtration? I would 
Okay, guys, is there any question related to the filtration? Before I move on, I, I might want to, if anyone want to ask about filtration, because this can be important for your fish keeping, because I'm trying to guide you guys to know how to keep, keep fish alive and well. Now, uh, it seems uh, there is no, no more questions. Yeah. You can continue the presentation. Right. Now, next, why is filtration important? Again, it keeps the level of ammonia nitrate and nitrite low. Keep your aquarium crystal clean. The thing is, with, without ammonia nitrate or nitrite, your fish will live happily and healthily. Mm -hmm. Some some uh, some fish couldn't even live with one uh, parts meter nitrate inside the aquarium. And also, who doesn't like a clear aquarium? A clear aquarium make your fish look like gemstones on on the sky. Mm -hmm. Make yes. your aquarium very lively and healthy. Who couldn't want that? Okay, next. Now, today, right now, I'm gonna talk to you about some fish diseases so that you could prepare for the worst in case something bad happens to your fish. Because everyone makes mistakes and everyone sometimes forgot to do water change or forgot to feed the fish or forgot to do something. Now, these are the uh, fishes, uh, most common, most common uh, diseases that you could find in a fish. Mm -hmm. Now, the first, white spot, ichthyophilus multifilis. What is that? It's a disease from the fish that uh, uh, appears as white spots on the fish. So you, you usually see your fish as some white spots or some, uh, not, not only white spots, actually, some uh, anorexic buildup on your fish that your fish becomes more and shrunk. Sometimes this happens and your fish so somehow dies because of this white spot. Well, the cure for it is uh, a medicine called methylene blue. And for, uh, for some added bonus, just add some aquarium salt to your fish and it will be fine and dandy. And then there is saprolegenia fungus. Saprolegenia fungus manifests in, in some kind of cotton-like uh, buildup around your fish's gills, mouth, mm -hmm. or maybe fins. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it looks like a white buildup on your fin, uh, on your fish's fin, and so it may be deadly if not taken care of. And then there's the swim bladder disease where your fish swims upside down. The only way to cure them is to give them Epsom salt and also some uh, added medications such as uh, high fiber foods and also warm water. There is piscine or mar marine tuberculosis. No, this is different than human tuberculosis, but this is also deadly. There is no certain cure for these diseases, unfortunately. However, you could do some uh, euthanasia to keep the fish from suffering and amputation if needed necessary. Although for smaller fish, you couldn't do amputation because it will uh, unfortunately kill the fish. And there is mouth fungus or columnaris. It will appear in the fish's mouth as in the, he's eating something quiet. And the only way to cure this disease, this fungus disease, is will also with malachite green. There is a calaminous worm. Well, it's an it's an outside parasite that hangs on in the anal fin or the caudal fin of the fish. It may may cause the fish some irritants, and you can kill them with something called levamisole. There is also fin rot and fin necrosis. Sometimes it usually happens to fins with long fin uh, long fins, such as betta fish or ikan cupang, guppies or angel fish. Now, the only way to cure this is to add aquarium salt and to keep your water clean. Again, keeping your water clean is very important to keeping your fish alive. Now, I have a question for you guys. Do you guys want to see the pictures for if the fish got sick with these diseases? Because some of the pictures may be not, uh, it's not good to be seen, but do you want to be educated with the pictures? Uh, do you guys want to see it or not? I want to see it. You want to see? Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, for those who doesn't want to see, just close your eyes, okay? It's kind of disgusting. Here, you see, is a dwarf gurami or uh, sepat, sepat dahlia that has tuberculosis on the side of the skull and mm -hmm. in the lower mandibule of the fish. You see, it's like some kind of tumor, and the only way to get rid of it is to amputate it or the, just kill the fish. The red one, yeah, the red one on. Yeah, the red, the red one on the top of the skull and the lower mandibule of the fish. 
and uh, this fish will not live long whatsoever so i'm i'm really sorry for whoever owns this fish because if one on fish gets uh, tuberculosis mm. it's almost guaranteed for all the fish in the aquarium to get tuberculosis can we get so, contaminated if we touch the skin by the disease uh, 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 as i said uh, earlier the tuberculosis is the different strain from human tuberculosis human tuberculosis uh, this is a marine tuberculosis where it spreads through uh, fresh water while we humans uh, contract it through bodily fluids like spit or just like coronavirus basically. Ah, now okay. the different, this one uh, lives in water and humans are immune to it, thankfully. But fish, not so much. All fish are very, uh, quite very, can be infected by this disease. And if uh, contaminated, make sure to quarantine your fish, okay? Now. This is a case of Ichthyophilus multifilis, or ich, as the people call them outside of the uh, Indonesia. This fish right here is a, mo a black molly, a, a molly shat to, uh, uh, to be precise. This fish right here has white spots, uh, white cysts mm. that appears at the skull, tail, and almost every part of the body. This is not, not a deadly disease, but it is annoying to the fish. So make sure to keep your water clean and make sure to give uh, a, a, an enough amount of aquarium salt, uh, salt to keep them alive. Next. Now, this is one of the most disgusting uh, diseases. This is fungus growth on a beta fish or ikan cupang. This, fi uh, this right here is uh, Saprolegenia uh, fungus. And this right here is a columnaris fungus. Both are different. One looks like cotton wads, and one looks like uh, spot white spots on your fish. The columnaris can spread to the mouth, as you can see here. One grows right there. And to clear them out, you just give them. Uh, sometimes you can give the malachite green, or sometimes give the methylene blue. Either one is good because it's an antibacterial and antifungus medicine but make sure to keep your fish healthy with clean water. This is one of the common diseases to get in a better fish, so make sure you have a malachite green ready if you want to keep better fish. Okay, next. Now, this is a, a very dangerous amount of columnaris growth in the mouth. This fish is a Congo tetra and is uh, rather in the late stages of columnaris infection. Unfortunately, this fish I don't think this fish would survive long because of the columnaris, the fish couldn't eat or do its basic jobs as a fish. Sometimes they get picked on because they're sick and they lose their territory. This fish right here is not good to say the least. All right, that's the end of the fish. Oh yeah, this is also a cal cal calamanus worm. The name calamanus came from, you guessed it, it's, it came out from the anus of the fish. The worm itself is rather disgusting, and I've experienced a lot of uh, a lot of time dealing with this certain parasite. This parasite sucks the blood of the fish, which which is why they have red colorings. Oh. And uh, because of the because of the nature of this parasite, this fish is certainly dead because the fish cannot defecate or consume food normally. Unfortunately, the only one to uh, to cure the fish is to euthanize it. But you can use levamosol to clear any eggs remaining on the fish itself. Now, let us continue to the main uh, main topic that is keeping your fish alive, uh, fish diseases. Now, that's it for fish diseases. And then next, water parameters. Now, some people think as long as I give my fish water, they could live. However, this is not true. There's different kinds of water parameters that you could find in a fish, such as, now, there's temperature, there's pH, there's ammonia, nitrate, nitrite, alkalinity, hardness, and general hardness. Now, this might seem like, sounds like big words to you, but to be honest, this doesn't actually imply much to the longevity of your fish. As long as your fish has clean water, like ammonia, nitrate, and nitrite, it's probably okay, but to keep your fish happy and healthy, you might have to consider the pH, the alkalinity, and the general hardness. Now, what is temperature? In Indonesia, we live in a tropical country, so the, uh, so the temperature doesn't need to be uh, regulated 
like outside of Indonesia where they have snow or winter. Now, because the water in our country doesn't froze, we doesn't need to worry about this. However, with pH, we sometimes have to worry. Freshwater community fish usually need about this amount of uh, this amount of pH and water condition. African secret needs this. Freshwater plants and discus fish need about this brackish brackish water. Now, brackish water is in the the mid between freshwater and seawater. So you need actually high amount of general hardness and alkalinity. And Pon is about this. Now you may ask, what you already know temperature, you already know pH from the uh, from a second grade, I think the teacher told you. And alkalinity and a general hardness sounds bad, but it's actually not. General hardness uh, literally only means how many minerals are in your water. You may heard of mineral water before, but you don't actually know what that means. Mineral water usually have a lot of calcium carbonate, have some uh, rock materials on it that makes the fish, uh, that gives the fish certain calcium or mineral things so, such as magnesium or iron, for example, that uh, Now there's alkalinity. Alkalinity is uh, is not to be explained a lot. Basically, how many how many alkaline uh, materials there is in your aquarium, it count as KH, while general hardness is count as GH. Now, the thing is, this is not really important. Usually, this is only important if you want to keep certain hard, hard to keep fish. So let's move along. Now, most people would usually use just uh, rainwater, for example, or tap water or well water, but they doesn't actually know the difference between a lot of these. This water has different qualities that could uh, profound your aquarium in a different way. For example, rainwater and reverse osmosis water is generally the purest kind of H2O you could ever get. But because it's pure, you have to change the pH or the pH according to your fish's need. For example, if you have an African cichlid or some kind of discus, you might want to add or decrease the pH as long as you need it. And there is tap and well water. Tap and well water doesn't actually differ much, only that it's dependent on your region. Maybe your region is near swampy areas where the uh, pH is really low, or you live near seawater where, where the pH is quite high. Now, before I move on to what, uh, towards the species of fishes, is there any more questions? Because uh, you might want to get some grades, uh, extra grades for your upra. So. Uh, you may ask some questions right now. Go ahead. Any, every, anyone? Any question, guys? Any questions? Because if I if I keep talking, well, uh, well, I think you you have to make it short because your friends will need. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna ask, ma'am. Who do you think I should ask, ma'am? Oh, what is it? Maybe I would pick a name to ask. You know. To oh, uh, yeah. uh, Marcella. I think Marcella. Okay. Marcella. Marcella, have you paid attention? Do you have a question? Oh, Fozan, Fozan, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, Jan has, has a question. Yeah. Yes, but uh, just, just type it out, Fozan. There's okay. something wrong with the microphone. Yeah, yeah it seems that Fozan have uh, something wrong with his uh, microphone. Wait, I'm going to check. Well, I think Sela will help you. All right. Uh, Sela, do you have any questions? Perhaps. Sela, do you like fish? Yeah, do you like fish? I like fish. Yes, I have a question, man. I don't have a question, man, for Alif. Oh, I see. Okay. That's understandable. Uh, Ojan? Hmm? Lintang, go ahead. Okay, Lintang, what is it? Yeah, Lintang. Come on. Uh, 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 about a filter, Alif. Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Ah. Uh, uh, you said that filter uh, info, uh, have very uh, important things. Yes. So does each uh, different fish have a different filter's requirement too? Or they just have uh, the same filter? Now, that's a great yeah, question. Yeah. Uh, that's a great question, Lintan. I forgot to mention that some fish needs a different kind of filter. For example, sp sponge filter is perfect for uh, baby fish because they don't have a big big suction that could 
um, damage or destroy fins or maybe consume the fish entirely. While hang on back filters usually good for people who, who doesn't have the time to keep and manage their aquariums because they usually have different, uh, different amount of uh, suction power or it, they do, doesn't actually need a lot of maintenance. So you can keep that uh, as, you can keep, keep that as much as, uh, as much fish that you want it to be. And then this is, this filter right here is, uh, the external filter is used for large amount of fish, for example, a 500 gallon aquarium or a 1000 gallon aquarium, because this filter right here is very fairly big and can take a lot, a lot amount of ammonia and nitrate. This right here is a water pump that can be used to power different uh, different filter, for example, sponge filter or a hang on back filter. Does that clear your uh, question, Minta? No, I'll leave there. It's very clear. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Is there any more questions to be asked? Because uh, we we got a lot to go through here. So yes, just if you have any questions or have any confusion, just ask. It's okay. All right. It seems that there is no more questions. I'm going to continue forwards with the thing that everyone's, I think, waiting for. What kind of fish would you like to keep? Now, in the hobby, there is uh, this, this is the type of fish that I'm going to represent. However, I'm not going to represent all fish because it would take hours to explain. So I'm just going to explain one of the biggest genuses and families and orders in the fish community that we kept. One of them is Osphromelidae or Guramis, Cichlidae or Mujairs, Ciprinodontiformes or Guppies and Platys, Atherniniformes or Rainbow Fish, Cilioformes or Catfishes, Stripniformes or Goldfishes, and Charniformes or Tetras. Now, we're going to talk about Osphromelidae. Osphromelidae came from uh, came actually a lot of them from Indonesia. This is the Gurami family. However, you might see a surprise as, as in it actually has a wide amount of fish in it. For example, right here you have a beta albi marginata or uh, a beta fish. A beta fish is ikan cupang in Indonesia. This is ex an actual native from an Indonesia right here. And it is one of the most well-paid fish outside of Indonesia. However, the, the Indonesian community has not picked up on it. The general, uh, the general thing to know about the Gurami family is that they have, uh, they have a certain organ called the labyrinth organ around their gills that uh, allows them to breathe outside of water. That's why you could put cups, uh, uh, beta fish in cups because they can breathe outside air and be alive for a long time without water because they live in. Uh, places where they have short amount of water like swamps or rice paddies. And then we have this abnormally giant gurami or, you know, the uh, gurami with, you know, gigantic fins and the one that we usually eat. That's why we call them guramis because it's huge. And because it's from Indonesia, I have a strong pride for this fish. And one of the, one of the most known Osfermin days are Ikan cupang or beta fish. You can find any colors of cupang in the uh, in the internet, in the market, wherever places you might find it. And it's simply beautiful. They have long flowing fins and long uh, shiny colors that could uh, keep you watching all day. Now, next is cichlidae or cichlids. The, uh, this fish came from a certain place or in Africa and South America. They are, they are, you can see right here, the, the common angelfish, discus, blue Bolivian rams, Bolivian, uh, normal Bolivian rams. This right here is a uh, cichlids and many other fishes right here. Now, because I think I'm running out of time, I'm going to continue on for, forwards. Sydney, uh, Sydney dontiformes or life bearers and killifish. The, the fish that we refer here are guppies and mollies. And as you can see right here, they have a lot of colors and they usually require pH around 8 or 7.5. Though these fish have a, have a certain, well, certain uniqueness that they can breed to life young. Not, uh, not eggs, but the eggs quickly hatch after they come out of the mother's womb. So you could say they breed fish. And then the next one, 
is killifishes. Killifishes, as you can see here, actually there's not uh, not much known about the killifish that is uh, different from uh, different from the other fishes. So we're gonna continue on forward on uh, if. Uh, Ma'am, is the time is the time running out, or should I fast it up a bit? Uh, make it short. Make it short because make it short. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. There is a type of fish. This is rainbow fish, and then ciliformis. This is the type of catfish. They have uh, they have whiskers and long fins, and then stripiformis, goldfish, aka minnows. They have uh, they have long fins also. They they mostly live in uh, normal pH, and and continue with charniformis or tetras. Tetras have these they have multiple amount of color they live in normally six six to five ph and they are really easy to keep they have grouping mechanisms so that they uh, group in a lot in a large herd now okay thank you for listening that's all for me i hope oh, it is okay. Okay. Yeah, any more questions? Oh, God. yeah so uh after listening to the uh, the presentation about freshwater fish and how to keep them yeah i think lintang has already given you the question yes yeah so uh, we can go to the next okay. performance uh please once again applause for ali okay thank you okay. now next kira kira what are you going to do Storytelling, ma'am. Okay, come on. Kira. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. My name is Kaito Shakira, absent 27, and today I'm going to tell you a story about Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. Okay. The story takes place in Baghdad in the Abbasid era. Once upon a time, there's a carpet merchant who had two sons, one of them named Kasim and the other one named Ali Baba. After the death, after the death of their father, Kasim took over their father's business and, marry, and marries a wealthy woman. Because the, naive, because the naive Ali Baba, who is fooled by Kasim, marries a poor woman and sells wood in the forest. One day, Alibaba is at work collecting and cutting woods, and he happens to overhear a group of men galloping on horses. Carrying sacks and knives, turns out they were thieves. They stop in front of a big boulder, and one of them, who looks like their leader, um, stands in front of the big boulder and says the magic word. Open sesame. Then a cave opened. The four the thieves enter the caves. When they when the thieves are gone, Alibaba enters the cave himself. To his surprise, there are a lot of treasure. Because he was surprised, he takes some of the gold coins home. When he arrives home, Alibaba borrows his sister-in-law scales to weigh the gold coins. And best knows to Ali, um, Ali Baba's um, sister-in-law put a blob of wax under the scales to find out what Ali is using the scales for. As she is curious to know what kind of grain her impoverished um, brother-in-law used because um, Ali Baba's sister-in-law uh, didn't believe that Ali Baba has some treasures. Um, to her shock, she finds a gold coin sticking in the bottom of the scales. So Ali Baba's sister-in-law told her husband, which is Ali Baba's greedy brother, Kasim. Feeling envious, Kasim forced Ali Baba to tell about the secret cave. Kasim goes to the cave and enters with the magic word. But in his greed and, exact, and excitement over the treasures, Kasim forgets the magic word and get locked inside of the cave. The thieves find him there, so the leader of the thieves killed Kasim. When his brother does not come back, Ali Baba goes to the cave and to his surprise, he finds Kasim's body lying there. Ali Baba brings Kasim's body home. In the, in, at home, Morgiana, who is a clever maid in Kasim's household, hears all about the incident. 
with the task of making others in the village believe that Kasim has dead uh, because a natural death, Morgana purchases medicine from a doctor and told that Kasim is gravely ill. Then the next morning, Ali and all of his family and all of his family are able to give Kasim a proper burial without anyone in the village being suspicious. Um, the next couple of days, Kasim's um, wife couldn't bear the grief, so she dies. The thieves finding the body gone, knowing that realize another person is their enemy. So the leader told um, the, um, the thieves to go to the town and ask if someone had died recently. Um, one of the one of the thieves went to the doctor and said that um, is there someone recently died in the village? And then the doctor said that yes, uh, there's one uh, man named Kasim who is recently died, but he is ill because um, the because Kasim's maid purchases medicine from the doctor, and the thieves being suspicious of of them that. The thieves asked the doctor if, if someone is at the home, but the doctor said that no, because Kasim and his wife is dead, so nobody is living at the home again. But the doctor said that Kasim had a brother, which is Ali Baba. So the thief suspect Ali Baba is the one who carried the body from the cave. So he go to Ali Baba's house and mark the door with a symbol. The plan is for the other thieves to come back that night and kill everyone in the house. However, the thief has, see, has been seen by Morgiana and she, loyal to her master, foils his plan by marking all of the doors in the village with the same mark. So when the 40 thieves return that night, they cannot identify which is the house because all the doors in the house has the same mark. And then, um, the next day, another thief tries again and went to the doctor to ask if someone recently died. So again, um, the thieves this time take a chunk of a stone in front of the uh, in front of Ali Baba's house. But only this time, Morgana sees that again, and because Morgana is clever, she took a, a chip of stone from all of the village uh, from all of the house in that village. So um, again, the second thief is killed by his stupidity. At last, the head thief goes to. At last, the head thief um, goes to the village and try to look for himself. This time, he memorized every detail of Ali Baba's front house, so he um, so he remembers it himself, and then. One day, the leader of the thieves pretend to be an oil merchant and sells oil. And then, um, and then the leader of the thief said that um, he is. Um, and then the leader of the thief said that um, he went from um, another place that is far, far away. So he need a place to stay. And then, uh, when the leader of the thieves um, want to go to the house. Um, Morgiana, um, the clever maid, look at the barrel of the oil, and then um, Morgiana discover that in front, and because inside of the barrel is the thief hiding, about to kill Ali Baba. So Morgiana again foils the plan and pour, and pours um, hot oil. And then the thirty-seven thieves in their oil in their in the jars were dead because they were poured by the oil, the hot oil by Morgana. And then um, all the thieves were dead. Um, all the thieves were dead, but there's one thief standing, which is the leader. To exact the revenge, after some time, the leader established himself as a merchant and uh, become friends with Ali Baba's son. And then um, the leader of the thief is invited to a dinner at Ali Baba's house. But uh, the thief is recognized again by Morgana because Morgana is very clever. And then 
Um, so Morgana has a plan to kill the leader. Morgana performs a dance with a dagger, and um, as and when the leader is not paying attention, Morgana plunges the dagger in in the leader's um, heart. And then, um, when Alibaba hears that, at first he is angry, but when he finds out the thief tried to kill him. He gives Morgana the freedom and marries Morgana to his son. Alibaba is then left at the one only knowing about the secret cave and the treasure inside of it. Thus, the story ends happily ever after, except the 40 thieves and Kasim. Okay, yeah, the story about Alibaba and the 40 thieves. Okay, anyone, after listening to the story, uh, what is the moral of the story come on come on alibaba guys did you listen to the story okay uh kira can you share us do you think what is the moral of the story what can we learn from the story kira yes um the moral of the story is we shouldn't be greedy. We shouldn't um, take um, a lot of treasures to ourselves because mm -hmm. greed is only to take over your life and brings chaos. And uh, the other moral is we have to be clever like Morgana so mm -hmm. we can um, fight um, bad guys. Okay, we, we have to be a smart person, yeah? Okay, don't be greedy. Yeah, thank you once again. Applause for Kira. Okay, next, please welcome Gabby. Gabby, what you gonna do? Speech, ma'am. Okay, come on. Okay. Come on, Gabby, it's all yours. Okay, ma'am. Good morning to my lovely and respected teacher and my dear friends. My name is Gaby from 12 Social 1, number 12, uh, and the topic of my speech today is environment. As we know, environment is the surroundings or condition in which a person, animal, or plants lives or operates. In short, environment is the sources of our life. Our whole life depends on the environment. It directs our life and determines our proper growth and development. Good or bad quality of social life depends on the quality of our natural environment. The need of human beings for food, water, and other things depends on the environment around us. There is a balanced natural cycle exists between environment and the lives of human beings, plants, and animals. My, resi my residence at the moment is in Bekasi. There are a lot of variety of the weather in the city that keeps changing and affecting the environment around us. For example, too many heat from the sun cause dryness, too many rain cause flood. But in spite of the dryness and the flood, we still need and really depend on it. Our environment is getting worse day by day and we are suffering for other people's and our mistakes. It is getting harder and harder for our families to stay healthy with all the bad things we are around every day. We are affected by our environment and more people are getting sicker and sicker. This could affect our families and our future one day. We might not be able to see all, all of the bad things in our environment, but they are for sure there. Although certain groups are more vulnerable, Toxic substances in the environment affect every person, every day, and are the responsibility of all of us. This support my opinion about the cause because it is saying there are deadly substances in our environment we are responsible for. We are getting sick and dying because of the bad things we as people are doing to our world. This whole problem kill around 15,000 more victims in the year that followed 
approximately 100,000 people still suffer from chronic disease consequences to gas exposure today. This is also stating that things in our earth are killing us. All of these dangerous toxins, toxic, is causing people to get disease and killing our people we love. If this keep going on, our families will struggle to have families and this will cause our world and environment to be catastrophic in the future. So, the question is, what to do, how to do, and who to do it? Well, my dear, my dear teacher and friends, it is not about what, how, or who. It's all about what you can do as an individual. As teacher, what you can do. As parent, what you can do. As student, what you can do. It is a terrible problem and it needs to be solved. It should be a huge priority. Today, we have no excuse. We need to act now. There are some creative and effective things that we can do. We can call it 4R principle. The first R is replace. Replace items that can only be used once with items that are durable. The second R is reduce. Reducing waste by bringing your own cloth back when shopping to avoid using plastic bag. The third R is reuse. We can reuse the unused plastic bottle, plastic bag, or instead of shopping bag, we can use a re reusable shopping bag instead. And the last R is recycle. Recycling some stuff like paper, cans, bottle, and so on, that we can make so far as unique things. Therefore, with all our effort, our world can be healthy and happy. We can do all things with our happy heart and keep doing this together with everyone and spread awareness about our environment. Last but not least, don't forget to take an act because every little thing that we take will have an impact to others and of course, our environment. Thank you. Okay, Gaby, yeah. Thank you for the speech about environment. Yeah, we have to save our own environment. Yeah. Okay, guys, any question related to the topic about environment? Me, yeah. Question, Dustin, what is the question? Um, so my question is, um, what efforts that you have taken uh, in the reality for your own, own environment? Yeah, your real action to save your environment. Okay. Okay, can I um, Okay, Dustin, thank you for the question. So, um, I have al already taken all the four R that I already mentioned before. Mm -hmm. That is replace, uh, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Mm -hmm. But I a little bit focus on reuse and recycle. So since one year ago, I already used reusable shopping bag and reusable straw and so on. And also me and my mom already made some unique stuff from unused stuff. Oh. And soon I am going to make um, community with my friend that mm -hmm. focus on keeping the environment clean. In your neighborhood, Gaby? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Alif, what is the question? So, my question is, how do we convince our government to make laws protecting the environment to make some real change? Repeat once again, Alif. How do we convince our government to put laws protecting the environment to make some real change? Oh, how do we convince our government? Yes. Yeah, to, make to, some real change laws, to, yeah, to protect the environment. Yes. After this, be ready for Kanaya, ya. Kanaya Dustin Sela. Uh, Gaby, where are you? <laughs> Anyone? Maybe you can help uh, Gaby. Yeah. How do we con convince our government? to create laws, yeah, to protect our environment. What is it? Hmm. 
JB, are you with me? I think Gaby lost connection, man. Oh, okay. Uh, Alif, uh, we, we, we will have Gaby, ya, yeah, to reconnect. Okay. Uh, continue with the next performance. Yeah, please welcome Kanaya. Kanaya, what are you going to do? Uh, presentation, ma'am. Okay, come on. You can start. Yeah, come on, Kanaya. You will you will to share screen. Yeah. Gabi, are you ready for the the answer? Yes, ma'am. My okay, question is for that. There is a trouble. Yeah, okay, Kana, yeah. You can continue. Okay. Sudah belum. Belum. Hmm. Belum muncul, ma'am. Mm -mm. Anyone, can you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on the way. Sudah. Yeah, bullying in school. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good morning, all. So, my name is Kana Elisa, number 15 from Social One. So, the, the topic that I choose is presentation. So, here's I'm going to do presentation about bullying and school. So, next. So, first, we go to definition. What is bullying? Bullying is when someone who hurts with a bit word or action is usually more than one. So here's the example of bullying. First is punch. Punch is one of the child bullying. This involves involves hurting someone. For another example, like you think you think tripping. And second one is yelling at someone. Yelling at someone is verbal bullying. For example, like you think and intimidation. And the third is breaking curse. You think breaking curse is emotional bullying. For an example, like Manipulating social situation. And the last one is playing and spreading rumors. This is one of social bullying, for example, like hurting someone's relationship or reputation. So here's a uh, question How many students keep school to avoid being bullied every day? Uh, A is 1,000, B is 50,000, C is 140,000, and D is. 150,000. So there are 150,000 children in school because they said they will be they then attend the class. So in the fact, there are 190,000 students in school each day because they are afraid getting sick up or something or beating up. If you see the number, that's a lot of number, unfortunately. Because of that, it can affect the learning process. So here's another question is what percentage of students in grade 4 to 11 are victims of bullying? A is 10%, B is 30%, C is 70%, and D is 90%. So the answer is 90%. Yeah, it's almost close to 100%. That's on ABC News source, there are 90% of students who are bullied at school. And on another research, 35% Percent said they have been bullied at least twice a semester, and while 25 said they underwent bullying at least three or four times a week. Sadly, only 10% of students have to move to another school due to bullying. So, first, it is a uh, cause of bullying. Uh, bullying begets bullying. It means often a uh, person who bullies others could be because someone else has bullied them in the past, so they may have experience of bullying maybe by their friends or parents or their siblings. So another one is the person who bullies may be protected from an of whom 
they are bullying uh, because they're just jealous and it could be dangerous for someone who always get the best dress and uh, grab and always just, uh, be the center of attention. So why bullies is not cool? Because bullies can cause stress, anxiety, and lack of self-confidence. And bullying can reduce learning achievement and make children afraid of school. So what can you do if you think bullies first? Don't let her to work with you down. Two, say nothing and walk away if you need to run away. So you tell someone you trust like parents, teacher, friends, or mentor. And if you have both friends, you tell with your friends. <laughs> And for if you are feeling very sad or unsafe, always find help. Best to find it. Best best to find a trusted help. Do not know if, if you do not know who you talk and you feel like you want to hurt yourself, call the national cyberprotection hotline. Let's remember. So what could you do if you see bully around you? First, you have to record it to anyone. And be a good person, especially for the things of bullying. Just be a good listener, you know. And the last one is speak out for the good things. So here, the conclusion from my um, presentation is: I just want to say to stop bullying because everyone is just everything that they already got. Don't take the judgment like just because you don't like her or him, and respect people's feeling even if it doesn't. And it matter anything to you, it could be anything to them. So, then last word is still not the bullying. Thank you. Man. Okay, applause for Kanaya. Guys, after listening to the topic about bullying, yeah, any questions related to the topic? Additional? Hey, yeah, Karen, what is the, the question? Uh, okay, so my question is. Uh, who uses to be a uh, people who do bully? Repeat yeah. once again, Karen. Who uses to be a people who do bully? Who used to be a people who do bully? Okay. Yes. Um, okay, thank you, Karen. Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. After, after Karen, ya. Yeah. Okay, Kana, ya. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you, Karen, for the question. It's Usually, people who that uh, who bully is uh, people they think they have more power, and yeah. or he or he with them uh, bully the weak one because they mm -hmm. think they have more yeah. power. The people with the power, and then they bully the weak person. Okay, continue. Uh, Sela, what is the question? Uh, what can you do of the problem? What can you do to stop the problem, to stop the bullying in school, at school? From my point of view, or... or uh, yeah, yeah, come on. Uh, just don't be a judgmental person and uh, live happily and um, just uh, don't, just don't make... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just don't be a bully, yeah. <laughs> be nice to others. Okay. Otherwise, someday you, you will get bullied also with other people. Okay. Uh, Gaby, you want to answer Alif's question? Yes, ma'am. But yeah. Alif, can you repeat once again the question? Yeah, repeat oh, once again, yes, Alif. I'm sorry, wait. How do we convince our government to put laws protecting the environment? to make some real change. Mm -hmm. as, the, as the citizen, yeah, yeah. what can we do to, what is it, to convince our government mm -hmm. to create law protecting our environment? Okay. Um, I think um, as a 17 years old, we mm -hmm. have the choice to choose who sit in our government okay yeah therefore we have to choose pro-environment government official yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay mm -hmm. if you are 17 is all it means you can vote for the yeah. one you can uh what is it <clears throat> in our government to create law that protecting the environment okay 
Thank you, Gaby. Thank you, Kanaya, Alif, and Karen. And applause for all of them. Okay, next, please welcome Dustin. Dustin, what you gonna do? Ke kedengeran nggak, Mem? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Um, I'm going to do combination between impromptu speech and manuscript speech. Okay, but, come on. Um, wait. Yeah, so, you uh, greet your friends. Oh, yeah. Introducing the members, tell what you are going to do. Come on, it's all yours. So, good morning, members and friends. First of all, I would like to thank my God that has given me his blessing so that I can be here in front of the audience. Then I thank Mamlin and my friends as well because you all has given me opportunity. At this moment, I will tell you all about my speech. It is about how we should behave ourselves during the current situation. What is the current situation? We know that uh, the, the current situation that we are facing is COVID-19 pandemic. You all might know our current situation that I mean. As we know, um, we are facing COVID-19 pandemic right now since on 2020. And then, um, I personally have seen a lot of people worrying about themselves and their surrounding as well. Some people worrying, but some of them were just not giving care at all. And I have seen people who have lack of knowledge about the COVID-19 pandemic. As intelligent human beings, um, we should not criticizing something rapidly or just like spread this hat or something. But I do have seen a lot of people share their hat and just being acting chaotic uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic and keep complaining. Um, before we criticizing or before we know or obtain information about it, we have to know the whole things first. Um, and then, so what is COVID-19? Coronavirus disease or COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by a newly discovered coronavirus. So it's basically um, a new type of corona, it's a new type of virus, it's like, um, one family with the previous virus that infected the world yeah, is MERS, MERS, if you ever heard of it. And then most people infected with COVID-19 virus, virus will experience mild to moderate respiratory illness and recover without requiring special treatment. So um, there's no specific um, medicine about it, but I heard that um, world has um, world has produced the vaccine. But uh, I'm not going deeper and talk it in scientific way. But the point is that kind of virus is extremely dangerous and we should stay alert towards it. We might have seen in every single online media that present information about it. Um, we all know that the virus is dangerous and everything. And then the most common symptoms are fever, dry cough, and tiredness. Less common symptoms, edges and pain, sore throat, diarrhea, conjunctivitis, headache, loss of taste of smell, a rash on skin, or discoloration of finger or toes. Furthermore, there are some serious symptoms such as difficulty of breathing and shortness of breath, chest pains or pressure, and loss of speech or movement that bring mortality. So the serious symptoms uh, is the popular one because we might have seen it on every single media. And I think we all know about it, that uh, COVID-19 bring trouble breathing. And then um, I'll, I'm going to I'm going to um, tell you all the the issues that we're facing first before we get in deeper into how we should behave ourselves. So um, as we know, all sectors are chaotic. First of all, um, the sectors that we are know is chaotic is the economic. So. As the Minister of Finance says uh, that economic growth in Indonesia is getting lower at first and it's kind of dangerous, but um, I do uh, read, I have read the, uh, some articles that in almost end of the year, the Indonesian economy is getting stable. And then um, in the social media platform, you can see the chaotic side too. There are a lot of people who throw heads towards each other, especially they are targeting China. And then I personally have seen in the social media like Twitter that um, everyone else is just um, throwing hate to the Chinese Indonesian 
because they think that they bring virus, so they just throw this hate comment. Um, and so does other country like America or some kind of Western country. They have a sentiment toward China because um, they think that China is the problem of the world. So I think it's kind of racist, but yeah, it's break, it do not break my heart. Um, we don't see each other as human being anymore. Since I have a lot of Chinese friends, so it's kind of um, make me hurt. But um, I think we should behave ourselves first and not knowing that this is pandemic that globally are facing. So, uh, and don't attack one side, it's just because of this program. So we should uh, behave ourselves like that. We have, uh, sh we have to be well mannered and we have to respect each other. And then be, uh, after that, in addition, we have to know the issues within our country first. The Indonesian government seems somewhat confused about the continuum effects of this virus. Even the public statements of each state officially contradict each other. In addition, the disclosure of information and data from the central government is still questionable. For example, it is out of sync with the data published by the local government. So um, it, in short, um, I, I have seen a lot of Indonesians just like questioning government because like they kind of hide some informations. So yeah, they have less trust to the government. Um, so this is kind of the issues too. And then not to mention the lack of the rapid tests conducted by the government with various difficulties, making Indonesia one of the country with a low scale and the percentage ranking of world countries for the coronavirus tests. I think we should um, follow, I think we should follow the steps that advanced country has taken. For example, we should follow Japan or South Korea. I personally think that South Korea and Sweden is the best country for our for our country, Indonesia, to, to take a sample because um, I personally think that like South Korea, South Korea is um, taking sample, uh, they taking uh, thousands of people in just one day. So, uh, so it's kind of fast uh, for them to detect the coronavirus uh, compared with Indonesia. It is kind of expensive as we know uh, that um, the swab test is like uh, we should pay for it or etc. And then our political condition shortly before the COVID-19 pandemic can be said to ex have experienced a turning point for democracy. This is actually just a continuation of what is generally happening. The co this condition is reflected in the government efforts to produce various controversial policies which have been heavily highlighted and criticized by the public. As we know, when we are facing COVID-19, there's a lot of controversial policies in the government too, like, uh, as we know, omnibus law, because it may bring disadvantages to the labor and, and yeah, some kind of policies, uh, some kinds of law that, um, that society may criticize because it is controversial, it is, has uh, pro and cons, um, why they, criticize the law because they think that it just bring a disadvantage during the pandemic. It will, uh, and they they scare of poverty because in, in some, I, I have, I have uh, looking for the, some research that during this pandemic, um, million of people in Indonesia is lost their job and the poverty rates is getting increasing in Indonesia. Um, before the COVID-19 earthquake in Indonesia, the government has planned its ambitious infrastructure development, including a new capital in Kalimantan, but it all messed up because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So COVID-19 has been a serious issue and is giving negative impact to any sectors. Besides, there are some positive impacts too. Um, you may you may be questioning what is the positive impact? We, uh, we all feel the disadvantage the most. And then, I'm sorry for the noisy background. So um, there are some positive, uh, there are some advantages too. Like um, the air is getting cleaner. I, I have seen a uh, research that I'm saying Jakarta's uh, pollution is getting decreased and the air is getting cleaner because we all know we are getting locked down and we're getting quarantined. So there's no 
transportation just less and then the air is getting cleaner and then um we we getting more family oriented because in in this quarantines we potential potentially uh close with our loved ones and then in short is we have to obey the government regulation related with breaking the virus spreadness i do i do uh, see a lot of people complaining even my neighbors does so they keep complaining uh, when does the covid 19 pandemic ends when when for to be honest they are not getting obey i mean like they just um uh, go out from the home without using mask or etc and then so i think we have to discipline to ourselves first and we should support government regulation first and to the surrounding as well we could start help people that really want on tough situation during this pandemic since we know that pe many people have lost their job and then besides there are some tips for me to behave ourselves in a good way first of all we should control our emotions and not keep on complaining instead we, sh we can do a positive activities such as it could be a hobby or anything i have seen a lot of people um being so creative during the being so creative during this pandemic and they share their positive activities to the media and it inspired and influenced a lot of people i have a friend that uh, on the pandemic um she she creates some small business and it's getting bigger right now so it's i think it's kind of a good example for us like we should um own like a small business or whatever it could be food and beverage or hand sanitizer or anything a small business uh, in order to maintaining our revenue and finance and then by doing those things it could make us happy so that we are not worrying anymore because of the COVID-19 outbreak so uh, furthermore we should become and try to relax to ourselves do not over worry because of the terrifying news portrayed in the media in the television articles or something spend time with our family in the house could be a great idea too in any try to be more productive if it's possible you could start to create timetable i personally make a make a timetable for me uh, but i'm kind of disobey with that but i have a way of the timetable too so it's get, it's helping me manage my time well and then last but not least do not forget to wash your hands do physical distancing and maintain your healthness. That's all from me. Sorry for the mistakes I have made. Thank you for your time and your attention. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, Is there yeah. any question? Well, one question related to... Shekina, ma'am. Okay, Shekina, what is it? Shekina, where is it? Yeah. Um... The question is, what do you think about Indonesian effort to stop COVID-19 spreadness? Okay. Is there an equation? Shekina, Shekina, from Shekina. Answer Shekina first, man. Oh, uh, yeah, come on. I, I think um, Indonesian effort uh, at over overcoming the coronavirus spreadness is I think it's not really good because, like I said in my speech before, um, is all, um, almost people like disobey and just don't give in care. But there are some people who, who have obeyed the regulation of the government to stop the coronavirus spreadness. But yeah, I have seen a lot of people that disobey and and also uh, what what our country facing is we have a face mask shortage or in the other language is we are lack of what what you say uh, medical medical things medical equipment or we are having a face mask shortage um and yeah any kind of healthcare healthcare product is we, we are shortage of it and then what what i do I think about it mm. i think that yeah um, it, it is written in all the public uh, public places that we have to keep on physical distancing. But some people in here I see just like being so chaotic and don't want to keep in lines or yeah, just getting easier. So 
I think that's all from me. Like uh, uh, the, the point is all people has this all way and the from the medical side it's we are facing the problems like lack of equipment, medical equipment. So yeah, I think Indonesia that's why Indonesia is kinda of bad at overcome this COVID nineteen spread okay. compared to compared to our con to compared to our neighborhood country like Singapore or Thailand. Yeah. Thank you, Dustin, for the answer. Shaking up for the question. Applause. Okay, ma'am. Next, please welcome Marcella. Sela, what you gonna do? Hello, ma'am. Good morning. Morning. Today, I want to start telling about. The where Where are you? I cannot see you. Ma'am, are you on camera? No. She's on camera, and also. So your voice is a bit low. Hello. If you, it's a bit low. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Okay. Uh, I want to start telling about the golden snail. The golden snail. Yes. Okay. Come on, Sela. Once upon a time, live a young man, the name Galoran. He was respected because he's well and honored. His parents were noblemen, so he could live with luxury. However, he, however, he was very wasteful and just spent money of his parents. One day, his parents died, but he didn't care and continued to spend money as well as before. Because his life was so extravagant, that he he became a bad person. And then many people sympathized at, with him and offered a job for him. But every time he got a job, he always just tell it and it made him always be fired. Several months later, he met with the rich widow and then they was married. He, Of course, he was very happy because to be living in luxury again the widow had the girls had, the widow had the daughter the name jambian she was very clever and diligent in the wave but galoran didn't like the girls because she always called him because of his laziness and then galoran has planned to kill the girl he also her wife to kill her daughter her wife very said of hear the truth. Hearing the news, Jambean was very said, but he still gave herself to kill by her father. And then she wants to dump into them. And uh, the mother, uh, her mother agree and did all of her wants. Her body and her head changed to be into golden snail. Several years later, there are two widows, Bo Rondo Sambegil and Bo Sambega Rondo. When they looking for firewood, they found a beautiful snail and then they broke it and maintained it at home. Once they broke the beautiful snail, they were surprised because the beautiful because the snail changed to be the beautiful girl. And then they they were surprised because their kitchen always full with the fruit every day. The widow, uh, the widow allowed the girls to stay at home with them. And then one day the girl met with the prince. The prince very liked and interested with the girls. And then they were married and live happily together. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, guys, the story about the golden snail. So, guys, can you find out what is the moral of the story? Yeah, one, uh, you have extra point by telling us here what is the, uh, the moral value of the story. Come on, the golden snail. Extra point, guys. Okay, Sela, what is it? What do you think? What is the moral of the story? Uh, I think if 
uh, I think if we sacrifice something, we got uh, we'll, we we will get happiness in to get in future, ma'am. Okay, you have to struggle, yeah, to get your goals. Okay, thank you, Sela. Applause for Sela. Next, please welcome Melati. Melati. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, well, I know it's morning, but can we pretend like we in uh, night? Because I am going to tell you a story before we go to sleep. Okay. So, bedtime story. Come on. Yeah. Um, it's about the monkey and the crocodile. The monkey and the crocodile, come on. It was a beautiful lake surrounded by lush green grasses, beautiful trees, mountain, and sweetest, tastiest German tree. There lived a monkey on one of the German tree located near the lake. The lake also had a few crocodiles. There was one crocodile that used to collect the German fruit from the lake that fall from the tree. As the crocodile visit the German tree every day, it become friends with monkey. Crocodile and monkey met every day. The monkey helped crocodile by providing more and fresh German fruit from the tree. Their relation continue and they become close pal. One day, the monkey asked the crocodile to give some German fruit to his wife and family as the fruit were more delicious. The crocodile agreed and took a lot of German fruit and they and for his wife. The wife crocodile met up the I mean the cro the wife crocodile was so happy and surprised because she never had delicious fruit so far. And the crocodile wife inquired her husband where he got this fruit. The crocodile said that he has a friend, a monkey, that always give him German fruit. The wife crocodile met her plan in her mind. Does your friend eat this fruit every day? The crocodile said, yes, of course. Why? The crocodile wife said, oh my goodness, imagine how monkey's heart would be if he ate this fruit every day. Can you bring monkey's heart for me? What? No, I can't. He's my best friend. I can do that to him. Oh, come on. Don't worry, you can take him for me and I'll take care of it. Or else, you might try to push him down into the water as if he doesn't know how swimming. After a long time, the crocodile agreed with his wife. The very next day, the crocodile asked the monkey to come to his house and have lunch together. The monkey happily agreed with crocodile idea but monkey had a sorrow how how monkey that the crocodile's house if he can swimming the man the crocodile that understand monkey sorrow have answered the question don't worry i'll carry you on my back and i'll take and i'll take you back here safely too the monkey agree with crocodile and come to crocodile's back. When in the halfway to crocodile's house, crocodiles trying to push monkey down into the water. But monkey didn't fall because monkey held the crocodile tightly. But monkey got suspicious about crocodile's act and, and push crocodile to tell the truth. As the crocodile believed monkey is his best friend, he told everything about his plan. The conversation with his wife and the 
and the plan of stealing monkey's heart. Monkey that have intelligence, intelligent said to crocodile oh my dearest best friend you should have told me this earlier i usually doesn't didn't bring my heart i leave it on the branch of the tree maybe you could ca you could carry my carry back to the tree and i can give you my heart the crocodile agree and take monkeys back into the jamon tree when the when they arrived, the monkey climbed the tree quickly and escaped from the crocodile. The monkey shouted out to the crocodile, I told you were my best friend, but you cheated on me. I will never come back and I will never be your friend anymore. The crocodile understood his mistake and go back home empty handed, also lose his friend indeed. That's all from me. Thank you. Okay, applause. Yeah, uh, guys, what is the moral of the story? Uh, the crocodile, uh, sorry, the monkey and the crocodile. Anyone? Me. Guys? Yeah, me Evelyn, come on, Evelyn. What? Um, I think, uh, okay, the, I think the moral value is we we don't we don't trust anyone easily and mm -hmm. we should uh, think th uh, think twice like a uh, like a monkey it's okay a, yeah we should uh, easily trust someone else yeah okay thank you Evelyn thank you Melati applause for both of them yeah next please welcome Grace Hi, Grace are you there yeah, Grace, what are you going to do? Okay. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Relax, Grace. Yeah, come on.
Okay, thank you, Grace. You guys, the moral of the story? Want to try? Yakira, what is it? Uh, the moral of the story that I can take um, is we should have integrity and we should keep our promise. Yeah, we should have our own integrity. We should keep our promise. Thank you, Kira, for the question. Thank you, Grace. A plus once again. Okay, next, Karen. Karen, yeah. You are going to? Present, presentation, ma'am. Okay, yeah, come on. You start now. Uh, wait, ma'am. You will sh share screen? Uh, Kanaya will share screen, ma'am. Oh, Kanaya. Okay, Kanaya, please help, Karen. Wait, ma'am. Okay, the last performance. Yeah, after this, Haurel, are you there, Haurel? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, be ready after Karen. Guys, don't forget to upload to submit yeah your powerpoint yeah your text the pictures related to your speaking practical test to the google classroom ya yeah. oke okay, kanaya are you still wait, working on it wait ma'am yeah oke okay. the topic is about what karen uh Wait, um, okay. Body so, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi My name is Karen Samuel Tanker from Social One. Uh, good morning, my English teacher and all of my friends. I want to present that about body shaming. Yeah. So, next. Body shaming. What is body shaming? Body shaming is the uh, action or practice about Uh, humiliating someone uh, by making or mocking or critical comments about their body shape or size. For example, I tell my friend uh, that her body is so fat. Next. Okay, this and next. What are the different forms of body shaming uh, first is criticizing someone else appearance with their knowledge uh, second criticizing someone else appearance without their knowledge and third uh, criticizing one's own appearance this month. and the F, what are the effect of body shaming the effect of body shaming uh, victims are prone uh, to feeling inferior with inferior and angry with their bodies Uh, they seem uh, they seem to be indoctrinated by the words of others so they tend to always uh, see their bodies from negative side okay next this is uh, the description and how to deal with body shaming uh, first you must practice being grateful for yourself Second, releasing and accepting shortcomings in yourself and create an inner support to fight inner uh, bullying and change your mindset towards yourself. Okay, so this is the body positivity. What is the body positivity? Body positivity movement is a movement that encourages people to adopt more forgiving or affirming attitudes toward their self with the goal of improving overall health and well-being so say no to body shaming and bullying okay, okay. applause okay. yeah question related to the topic body shaming come on one question me yeah, Kanaya. Kanaya. yeah. what is the question <laughs> So the question is why people do body shaming? Why do people uh, do body shaming? Uh, uh, why people do body shaming? Uh, usually because because low self image, and then um, 
inability to communicate properly mm-hmm. and then uh, trauma in the past okay thank you karen thank you kanaya plus paul for both of them okay one last performance please welcome Haurel. Haurel, what you gonna do speech okay speech man okay. assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh What? honorable my teacher and my beloved friends good morning First of all, thank you for having me here in this fine and joyful morning. I hope we are in a good health, even though we only meet virtually because during the pandemic, we must stay at home. And we can only hope that there will be a solution to end this pandemic soon. Today, I will convey about the technology in our life. Technology is a tool that can provide a wide range of human needs in the form of goods or services necessary for the survival and help to comfort the human life. We know that technology plays an important role in our daily needs. From a day until night, technology is associated with our lives. Imagine if now the internet hadn't been invented. We cannot know the latest information in the world. If the transportation like airplane, train, MRT, LRT hadn't been invented, it took us a long time to get to other regions. No one can imagine a life without technology. As the development of this era, technology has also been developed. Even the development is now already very massive and almost inaccessible to human logic. In addition, the development was to touch all aspects in life, especially in this current situation. We can learn from home, we can work from home. Technology is very helpful for us. Ladies and gentlemen, technology has many effects for us. Example of the positive effect is technology enables communication among people. It has helped you to communicate with people all over the world through email, Google Meet, Zoom, Line, and many more. Moreover, with technology, we can buy everything in just one click, and then we can search anything with technology. We can see technology greatly simplifies our work. But what if we don't use it wisely? The negative effect is technology causes a lack of privacy, where anyone can, with a few flicks on the keyboard, find anyone's address and contact information. If we easily tell our privacy, it can make it easy for hackers. The technology also makes people hedonist. People will buy everything continuously, even though the item is not needed. For our body, technology will affect us. If we use it for hours, the indication is your emotional are unstable, your eyes feel tired, and your body needs help, needs it. So, <clears throat> therefore, we must use the technology wisely so that we don't harm ourselves and others. Things to break your technology addition is first set up technology free zone. You can develop your hobby like playing music, farming, or drawing, or many more. Second, uninstall addictive application. Third, enjoy your time with your family or your friends. So this is the end of my speech today. I have some of the points that I have conveyed today make us use the technology wisely. Sorry if any mistake from my speech. Thank you for your attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you, Haurel. Guys, one question related to the speech. Additional point. Melati. Melati. Come on, Melati. Uh, Haurel, I want to ask you, is there any negative impact for us in individually? Is there any negative impact individual uh, for, for individual? Uh, okay, thank you, Melati, for the question. Um, I think... Uh, like I have talked about in my speech, negative impact from the technology, uh, hedonism can be one of them. And if you use the technology like handphone for hours, your body will feel not good. It can be negative impact from the technology. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Haurel, thank you, Melati. Uh, thank you, guys. Yeah, you have done a great job. 
don't forget to upload your uh, PowerPoint, your text, your speech, your story on the